Meow, welcome back to my channel. I am Lag and you are my law. Today we're going to debut our Aura Kingdom podcast series. I've recently been accepted as a content creator for the game, so I will continue to make entertaining or informative content. I look forward to your support as I continue my journey here. With me today, we have two wonderful people who are very knowledgeable about the game. I'm going to let them introduce themselves before we get into the questions. Hello everybody, I'm Lolly and I am one of the game sages for Aura Kingdom. Hi, I'm uh, Scar. I'm still a baby GS, but I'm also uh, looking forward to helping any of you. All right, thank you very much for the introductions, GS Lolly and GS Scar. Baby GS Scar. <laughs> Soon to be big, Jessica. Okay, thank you so much for joining me here today. So I think we can get straight into the questions, I believe. Sure. Uh, are you guys excited? I am super excited. All right. So question number one. In a nutshell, what would you say Aura Kingdom is about? Car? Uh, for me, it's uh, more of a community. Um, not only the guild, but only also the people that, are, that you see around. Uh, all the events and all the um, other and all of the other uh, features the game has it's more about uh, building a community and friends than uh, yeah. just being a game where you want to try and be your best true i would say about the same like the game is like when you first start it's very much like story based and story focused you just kind of go on the straight path up until like a certain level then after that it gets to be more about like the daily things that you do Especially because there's more to PV and the game. You just end up like kind of finding the things that you like doing with the community, whether you are, you know, like someone who likes to just kind of like hang out and chat, or if you want to run lots of dungeons, or if you want to do professions, you want to kind of, you know, work on fashion, whatever it is, there's a lot to it. And it's really more about your interaction with the community. You can completely like be a solo player and just do your own thing because there's so much in the game that allows you to do that and just like not interact with a single soul if you don't want to but for the most part i'd say that the people that stay are really the people that kind of enjoy this feeling of doing things um, together and kind of participating in these events and things like that all right thank you very much um i think that answers my question a bit but i was hoping you could have uh i hope i was hoping you could have gone more into detail about what is the goal of this game like when you get into the game what is your end goal as a player joining okay well like straight up i think you know a lot of people are gonna say you know your goal is to level and get to the end of the story like where end game is which is most mmos you know, have this main storyline that you have to follow through so strictly speaking you're gonna say you know if i'm gonna start this game i'm gonna grind it out my goal is to be able to all the dungeons and finish the story mode um, but i think that part of the game itself is actually very easy it's, it's grindy obviously because we are at level special level 125 meaning you get to level 100 then you kind of get to end game where from 100 to 125 it's a lot more grindy um, i would say that that's kind of like the easy part of ak because there's so much more to explore okay okay thank you very much um this is a watermelon could you tell me what that is is that like a mount or is it... um oh <laughs> someone just sat on me how rude yeah. <laughs> who is that? Okay. uh that is what we call a transmog so transmogs are something that people love in games <laughs> that's riazzi she's one of my guild members i guess she just wanted to come to show her watermelon off 
Oh, okay, nice. Um, we have tons of transmogs in game that you can use to transform into other things. So, uh, the watermelon is one of them. Uh, they don't do much more than be like aesthetically cute. You can do some a little bit dances. Some of them will make you go faster or something like that. Yeah. But uh, I think that for most people, they're like one of the favorite, one of their favorite things about the game. <laughs> the transmogs. Oh, is that uh, a cute little bunny? They're just so much fun. Yeah. So I'm a bunny. He's a tanuki. And there's a, a watermelon, there's a bunch of them. Some of them are collectible in-game. That's so cool. Um, some of them you can get from the Paragons. Uh, a lot of them from dungeons. They're special battlefield dungeons that you can go and you can collect mounts and transmogs and things mm -hmm. like that. Oh, okay, okay. So it's pretty cool. Oh, and we got another latecomer here. Kitsune is coming as well. Nice. Uh, Kitsune was in the fashion uh, show. Kitsune was popping off. Um, yeah, so I think uh, you mentioned a lot of things that a lot of new time, like first time players may not understand, but I will be doing videos to cover different features of the game, such as the Paragon tables and all of that as time goes on. So, uh, and let's, let's move on to question number two, which uh, probably should have been question number one, but I am bad at planning. So, can you... Uh, can both of you tell me a bit about yourselves? Like, what exactly is a GS? What is a game stage? And how long have you been involved with the game? Uh, so, I've been playing Our Kingdom for about a little bit over three years. Mm -hmm. I've been a game stage for, I would say, like, kind of... Uh, about eight months now, nine months almost. Nice. Um, and basically our role is to act as a liaison between our wonderful uh, staff, you know, whether it be uh, some of the devs that we license the game from or the Gamigo and, you know, an area who run the game, right, who publish mm -hmm. the game. And between players, so anything from like you have a problem, you don't know what to do in game, you can't find the answer to a quest, you um, bought something on the web mall and you're not sure how it works, or you know you have a more specific question, you found a bug in the game, anything like that, we usually are the people that you're gonna go to and you're gonna kind of you know uh, talk to and see where to go from there. We obviously don't have all of the answers, but. As sages, we know quite a bit, and we can kind of look for a lot of the answers as well. And uh, we also function there to be as a, kind of like a place where you give the feedback. So if there's something there that you, you're not enjoying or something that you want to see more of, you know, we would be the people that you would talk to so that we could pass on like your feedback uh, to the uh, publisher so that they can do something about it. Oh, okay, thank you very much. That was very insightful. Um, what about you, Scar? I've been playing this game for quite a long time. I've joined in at at around uh, 2014. Um, then I stopped playing after a year and joined back in 2018. Nice. Uh, I've been slowly climbing up the ranks of uh, guild that I joined. Uh, now I'm co-lead, and after that, I decided to um, try and help out uh, in a but in a new way. And I applied to become a GS, and I've I'm now a baby GS since March. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. I, I am a, a baby myself since I uh I've I started this game like a week a, a week and a half ago. Yeah, I I installed I installed this game on the thirtieth of April, not not sorry the twenty third of April I believe. Yeah. So, I'm very very much a baby. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I look forward. We've all been there. Yeah, I look forward to integrating into the community and helping my community integrate into this community as well um also a game sages like uh player moderators people who are in charge of like 
like uh like reports and stuff like when people are being vulgar or rude in game stuff like that yes okay well, unfortunately it, like we have a really nice community but there's always gonna be you know a few of the naughty ones that come out out of the woods and either you know you have small drama about like a dungeon run or someone's just you know having a really bad day or something like that Usually, we also function to just make sure that the terms of service um, are being followed. Okay, so, nice. You can find the terms of service. They're very clear. They're posted in our Discord. If you ever have any questions. And, you know, if we do find a case where the terms of service are being violated, whether because we got a report from another player um, or, you know, we just happen to see it, we do have to kind of follow up on that. In okay. that case, like, yeah, if you have an issue where you see some sort of um, violation of the terms of service that could be detrimental to the community, you can also get a hold of us and let us know so that we can forward the information to our staff support. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to question number three. In your opinion, having played this game for so long, how important are these things called Eidolons? And how many of them do I need to have? Car, how many Eidos do you have? Oh, is that I... how it's pronounced? Eidos? Eidos? I, just, I say Eidos, but if people, everybody says Eidolons. Oh, okay. I'm just like Eidolons. And then it just stuck with me. <laughs> how many yeah. Eidolons do you have, Scar? I have 97 Eidolons, but Bruh. honestly, <laughs> Sorry. honestly, you, you can uh, you can get to a end game with only like five without yeah. without an issue. Um, obviously, you're gonna get your starter. Yeah, and there are a few that will be given out. Um, through quests, while the others are more, you have to work for them. But uh, you don't need them that much. They will help you, but it's not like you don't have an idol on. You're not gonna enjoy the game. I see. I see. So, uh, so basically, there's I think of the 114 idolons in the game right now. I'd say about 80 of them are easily farmable or probably even more. So you can get a lot of them with loyalty points. You can hunt them in dungeons. There are special dungeons called um, Eidolon Trials or Eidolon Trial Sanctuary. Um, and then on top of that, you have uh, spawns like the community manager does. You have uh, guild hall spawns. You have... Um, some other drops that you can do certain things like archaeology or something for them. Uh, so a lot of them are actually really easy to get. People get really scared because they're like, oh my god, there's so many. But I would say that if you're 100% free to play and you never get a non-loyalty idol, you can still get to end game and you will have no trouble completing basically um, every dungeon in the game from the main storyline. Okay. That that now, is sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say now there's a distinction. We were like, how many do you need? You don't need that many. You can actually get to S25, just having your starter Eidolons and the ones that they gave like game literally gave to you. They're like, here's a key. <laughs> um, but in order for you to be able to do a deal a certain amount of damage in like party mode or like hell mode which you will get to see as you keep like uh, growing your own character. Um, they do need something that we call Eidolon Archives. So an Eidolon Archive is something that's more of an end game kind of concern. So mm -hmm. after maybe you awaken your character, you gotta look back and be like, how's my archive? Um, where you get bonus stats that are good for every one of your characters, meaning they're, character, they're account bound. And so you have things like extra damage to bosses, extra damage to certain elements, extra elemental damage, uh, extra attack speed. So as you start to build those archives, 
in eidolons, everything becomes easier. So it's not something that you can't get to end game without the eidolons. It's not that you can't enjoy the game without the eidolons, but it certainly does in end game. I'm talking like level S10 and beyond. Uh, so 110 and beyond. It does help if you have some of that archive already kind of, you know, done. And that is the grind of like doing dungeons and things like that and looking for those item ones. Oh, okay, okay. And dungeons are, unlike in other games, dungeons are limited to the amount of times you can play them per day. Yes. Okay. So basically you have different types of dungeons. You have three hour dungeons, you have two hour dungeons, and you have six hour dungeons. And then you have a few special dungeons that are like one day dungeons. You can actually find all the times in what we call the AKDB or the Aura Kingdom database. And if you go under timers, it would actually show you when those dungeons are going to refresh so you can go and hit them again. So let's say you're looking for specific Eidolon that spawns in party mode uh, in a other world, or you're looking for an Eidolon that spawns in a hell mode in a specific dungeon, you can look and see like, okay, how long do I have to wait before I go there again? And it'll give you the exact times where you're going to have that refresh. Nice. So I'll nice. actually drop the link there, and you can share that with your friends. Uh, it will have actually a lot of timers for a lot of things in the game. So, oh, yeah, because, uh, I mean, we're fairly, we're fairly new, right? Uh, but one of, one of our members who also, who is part of our, our community, they played Aura Kingdom a bit from before. So they are in the guild uh, because they're in my they're in the Discord community. Um, so when we started the guild, they joined, and they've been helping us through. And today we discovered the joy of world bosses. So my my friends have just been. I mean, I can't go because I'm 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 under level compared to them, so I'm still story locked. But they've been going around just farming the world bosses with each other and they've been having so much fun with it so i guess they've been looking at those timers already kind of i guess i've i've been the only one out of the loop <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah so they are probably doing what we call the goats well there's mm. a lot of like weird um <laughs> like terminology in ak uh we call world bosses that spawn every four hours or so it's every four hours right scar i'm not very sure i I think it's like four or six hours. Yeah, either four or six hours. But they spawn in two maps called Vulture's Veil vale and Blizzardburg. And every time you kill one, it drops lots of loyalty points. So people love those world bosses because it's a really easy way to farm loyalty points, which we mentioned before um, is a key thing that you can get to get free Eidolons from the item Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me just show that on screen real quick again is there are two distinctions there there's the item all with things that you can get for cash basically uh with well not cash but aria points which you buy and then there's the loyalty shop with the stuff that you just spoke about right which has almost everything the cash shop has well necessity wise you can have a completely like free to play um, account and mm -hmm. not ever buy any um, area points and basically get I think pretty much everything in the game you have to grind a lot but um, it's pretty doable and a lot of a lot of people actually do it a lot of our players are not people who are spending you know money mm -hmm. in the game so and they've been doing it for a long time and it's just you just kind of have to find ways to kind of make that loyalty uh, points go far We'll talk that about that a little bit with like Ruby coins and doing the world bosses. Okay. Those are a great source of loyalty points. Would you guys mind? I know it's premature to ask this, but would you guys mind coming back for another round, like not not a podcast per se, but another video where we talk about things like world bosses and times and stuff like that? Of course, not a problem. Yeah, sure. All right. Cool. So that pretty much. Uh, I know we kind of straight off topic with that one a little bit. But that answered my questions completely about the Eidolons because I think it is one of the unique features to this game. And I really do enjoy that you can interact with your Eidolons from the menu here. Like you can just talk to them. 
and their points, their stamina goes up. It makes you feel like you bond with them a little bit. And then you and actually, the more you talk to them and you link them, so you've probably found the linking feature by now because mm -hmm. you've been talking to them. They do actually bring back their fragments. So you could have a one star Eidolon, and if you link it enough, you can have a four star Eidolon in no time. Oh, nice. Um, you just gotta keep talking to them, and they'll eventually bring back their fragments. So it's a really, really good way to kind of like, just get free Eidolons that are stronger. <laughs> just keep linking them. That's so cool. All right, let's move on to a big. The next question is a big, big component. So let's move on to number four. Um, without giving us too many spoilers, what is the story like, and how engaging is it? Kara, what's your take on the story? Um, <laughs> I when I first started, I didn't. Uh bother checking the story i was just pressing skip on everything but oh, no. late, later on <laughs> i uh, i did pay attention a little bit but still like i mostly skipped through it luckily there is a uh, feature where you can uh, look at uh, past cutscenes really? so yeah, it's in the Vea, right close. Oh. You can check all the cutscenes again. And so if, if you're interested in the lore, you can totally just go and watch them all of all of them again. That's a big brain. I, I am definitely going to do that because I, I've been leveling very slowly because I've been trying to read my cutscenes. <laughs> <laughs> That's like... That's, there are two kinds of players, um, and I'll be honest, it might be the second type. There's the one type of player that goes, how precious, there's a story, I need to know exactly what's happening, and they pay attention, and they love it, and they know exactly where the story is going, and then there's, like, like me, who are like Scar a little bit too, who are just like, okay, I'll come back later, and just press the button, because you just want to keep going to the next thing. So, um... I have been yelled at, like, how do you, I'm like, what? That's part of the story. And people are like, how do you not know that? And I was just like, oh, I wasn't paying that much attention. So I've, I think I've leveled like, I don't know, like seven, eight characters. And I still cannot tell you, like, like this, it's nice while you're like watching it. But then I, because I'm not like a, a huge lore kind of person, I tend to forget big pieces. I see. Like, yeah, because I'm like playthrough. I'm like, I get so excited playing in dungeons and like doing things and I just say it like killing things <laughs> that I just don't pay that much attention to what's happening in the story. But yes, there's definitely a codex. Like Scar said, you can go back and actually watch exactly what happened. Um, and the story is engaging. There's quite a bit there. Like it goes through different types of like um, issues that you have to kind of overcome. Yeah. So up until Awakening, you have like this one big boss who's like a big Betty, and then um, he kind of tends to pop up here and there again, but then he's mostly done. And then you kind of like have this new thing that happens, and I'm not going to spoil any of it, but it's pretty interesting, and it brings like different characters in, um, and like gives you a wider kind of understanding of like the... the yeah, world. because his story starts to change around um, level 50, around there. When you head back to Navia and then you get more of an exposure to... Because all of the time you're thinking that this is probably how, how the story is going to go. And then it just twists, like... Yes. <laughs> your, your writing was really well done, I think, uh, so far. There will be a lot of twists. <laughs> oh, no. I look forward to all of it. By far, you're already more of an expert on the lore than us. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, congr I, I just want to give props to the writers of the of the quests, the quest lines and all of that. It was very well designed so far. All right, so time for some hard hitting questions. You guys ready? Sure. Number five. How hard is the learning curve for this game? At, at the start, 
as you can imagine, it it really you see you you can just blaze through it without really needing to learn anything. But eventually, at around uh, maybe level ninety, you will have to learn everything that you skipped if you didn't already learn it, because the awakening quest is quite hard to do, especially if you never noticed what your skills do. Oh, sheesh. Or one of your passives. So there's quite a bit of players that ask, um, why is awakening so hard or why is, uh, why does it feel like it's impossible? But then I check their uh, gear and equipment and um, and where they put all the points, and I just have to explain what they skipped through. And after a bit, they are able to finish the quest without a problem. Ah, okay, okay. So you're gonna probably, so, I'm gonna probably be one of those players that you have to explain things to. Yeah. So like the learning curve versus the experience curve in this game is a double-edged sword. So the game has made it very easy if you're just going like, I'm just gonna follow the storyline. You do like me and Scar, and we just click, click, click. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it all stops to smell the roses. Uh, you can go through and like be in the level 90s. Um, mid 90s without even having to do like a single solo dungeon um, other than the one into the storyline or to uh, do any party dungeons or to do any of the extras right? you just kind of like get there and you're all fresh and you got all the gear from the envoy support cube which is also something that every player should cherish and be very careful not to uh, delete um, as you're given everything. So in a way, like up until close to your awakening in your 90s, you are really in a tutorial, in a really fancy tutorial. It's taking you through the storyline, but it's also like kind of making it easy for you to go through it. Nice. Uh, but then you get to a point where if you didn't pay attention to certain, some of the things that they were trying to show you, you skipped a lot of things because it was easy to skip them. The sense of paying attention to gear, paying attention to skills, like Scar said, like kind of looking back and thinking like how are my points best allotted and stuff like that, you end up coming in like very green and you will have trouble with the awakening. Now the awakening can be bought with loyalty points again. So if you are having an absolutely hard time and you don't want to grind for a month, you know, to get everything you need to pass awakening like really easily, you can just buy the the key fragments like with loyalty points and it's not a big deal you can always go back and try to do it manually when you have a second character and you've built up a little bit more experience in the game oh, okay it is a good measure of how much you know because you need to understand how these dungeons like um, are affected as you start to level up one thing you'll notice is that the dungeons will give you harsher debuffs let's say you're like all happy you're like i have a hundred thousand hit points and my health points are so high i feel amazing and then you walk into a dungeon and suddenly you have like 70. like what happened yeah it's because as you progress through the story the dungeons are going to give you harsher debuffs the bosses are gonna you're gonna have to use more skill and more knowledge and there's an expectation there that you also build up things like the masteries that you are leveling your secret stones that you are understanding how to use uh, your armor and your weapons efficiently. Um, that you are trying to get your masteries, you know, the higher grade. All right, so I can tell you 100% I am doing none of those things. <laughs> so we will we'll talk about these things in detail at some point. We can definitely come back and kind of explore some of these. But the learning curve itself or what you need, all the things you need to like health like function in the mm -hmm. game without any yes. help or any kind of like feedback there's a big learning curve for you to be able to level no problem it's not that bad but it's... yeah because you do tend to progress through the storyline up until the 90s very fast without needing much with all the help with the envoy support cube and the easy bosses you do end up like not being challenged to actually 
I use some of the skills. I actually haven't used my Envoy Support Cube because I was saving it for another character if I make it. You, you can use, can it, use it. And uh, the gear that it gives you, you can just place it in the warehouse and transfer it to your new character. All right, because it does say it. The gear usually says from level one upwards. It, it isn't mm -hmm. level locked. It will give you gear from one to ninety orange gear, like the yeah. armor. And it will give you some other goodies, like some dragon points and some emblems and all of these other things that will make it a lot easier for you to progress. Oh. Don't use it frivolously because you might need it at some point. But you can totally open the cube and use it now. Um, you will, especially once you awaken a new character, um, you will get plenty of chances to get more of those things. And in terms of gear, your armor, yeah, just pass it to your shared warehouse and then give it to another character as you go. All You're right. not like throwing it out completely. Nice. Thank you very much for that information. I, um, yeah, I, I, there's a lot that I don't know about the game, but I've been like trying to, it's things that you can take your time with, you know, like I, I, I learned fishing the other day and that is when I made my video and yeah. now I'm Did so, you like fishing? I do like fishing and I like that the penguin shows up randomly to try and steal it. <laughs> the penguins are fun. And I've, I've been playing with uh, crafting and uh, the the recipes and stuff is is cool um but each system you know at least there's a quest that teaches you i guess but i think you have to go a little more in depth uh on your own like take some time away from everything and just sit and read uh, at least that's how it has been for me to kind of understand how these things work yeah, you kind of do, like, I would say, like, don't waste money, especially, like, don't waste your gold and your time, like, making gear when you're being given gear mm -hmm. before you're, <clears throat> like, S1, but do learn that these things are important and do learn how they work. Um, so, for example, I would recommend for most people walking into level 90, make of your weapon, like an orange weapon, or make a sub-weapon with a knock, like a nocturnal core. Oh, I saw one of those on the auction board like, today. Yeah. It can be quite expensive, but you can make them, like, for cheap, but you just have to grind it. I, somebody, uh, <laughs> sold a, somebody sold a shinobi uh, weapon with a nocturnal core for five gold, so I just bought it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, depending on level, they can be fairly cheap. But, like, if you're saying, if that was a blue weapon, it's mm -hmm. not a great thing. No. There's qualities to weapon and to gear, and you learn that as you go along. Right now, it doesn't matter. Anything you use, you'll be fine. Oh, okay, because I've just been... So you can, yeah, you're fine. You can go in, you can get some blue weapons with Noct, you can try out different gold weapons that you get like from the encyclopedia, uh, or you can use like the Harvey's weapon as a favorite from, mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of new players, because it's like basically free. Um, you can do that, and it's not going to make much of a difference in your main playthrough, like in your quest. Mm -hmm. okay. when you get to 90s you start to notice that things are going to get a little bit harder oh things are a few things that have been added to it so we have things like boss toughness we have uh what we call penetration um effect we have to be able to break through their toughness with penetration for that you need special gear that gives penetration you need enchantments that will give you penetration um you will need you know, a specific type of, like, 90s or 80s cards that you put on gear that will help a lot when you're doing those bosses, right? So um, those things that are added as you go through, you'll start to notice things just getting a little bit harder until you get to your 90s and you're like, oh, okay, this is where I get challenged. <laughs> uh, so until you get there, play around, so, like, discover things, see how easy. But I would say, and I don't know if Scar will agree or not, but I would say the expectation is when you get to 90s, that you're not using green weapons anymore, you're not using blue weapons, you are starting to learn how to properly craft orange weapons or use gold weapons efficiently. Or do you disagree? Um, no, I agree. Um, <laughs> one thing that they would also be important for them to learn is uh, that the level 
doesn't matter as much as the uh, uh, set bonus. Oh. What, what is a set bonus? Uh, if you look at your uh, gear, for example, you have uh, the Nightmare Mask and the Area Code. Mm -hmm. um, they're not as set together, so they don't give you a bonus. Uh -huh. If you mouse over one of them and hit Alt, it should uh, show in purple the, at the bottom. Oh, yeah. One out of so, two. Yeah. So if you have the uh, set bonus for the uh, mm -hmm. area code, you'll get uh, a nice bonus of uh, 15 damage to uh, bosses. Oh, I see, and, I see. Uh, and the healing. I did not notice that because I, I, I was like, where is the stat differences? And I pressed alt and I was like, oh, I can see stat differences. And that's why I was just, uh, okay. Yeah, and that's one of the things that you will be getting from the Envoy Cube. It will give you all orange armor. Okay. You won't have to actually worry about like, these things because you just wear what the, what the cube gave you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But right now you have a, a mismatch, which is working for you right now because you're going through dungeons, but eventually that won't mm. work anymore. Oh, okay. You have to, if you want, you can look at my equipment, so you can press on the character, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can go to view equipment, and then you can look at the equipment that I'm wearing, and you can see that everything I have is a set. Oh, okay. Wow, that's a lot of stats. That's a lot of damage. So you see, like, for example, this is an Agni um, accessory set. So the bonus set is that it gives me additional crit dam uh, critical damage. Mm -hmm. right? So when, I, when I'm using the sets together, it significantly raises my potential for, like, doing damage because it ups my crit damage. Or you can look at, mm -hmm. like, the top and the bottom set combination. So damage plus 17 crit damage to bosses plus 40 so these actual like what scar said these combinations are way more important than the actual like flat stats of the sets or the flat stats of the items yeah. which is why we always make sets i see i see that's that's so cool i can totally need out over that um later thank you that's so cool and so that is basically um, kind of like the idea when it comes to the learning curve is learning all these small things, mm -hmm. all the little things that you can do to improve that at first, because you're just kind of like playing through and you're experimenting and you're looking at different things, you end up getting a little lost about what's important to focus on gear wise and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have anything else to say on that scar? Or can we move to the next question? No, that's about it for now. All right, so question number six. Am I able to solo this game? And I guess you kind of explained that a little bit in the previous question, but I'm not sure if you want to, for timestamp purposes, just give give me an answer to that. Yes. You are able to solo most things. There are uh, some dungeons or world bosses where you will need other players. For example, uh, there's a uh, really popular dungeon, VOE, where uh, it will give you quite a bit of uh, LP and some other fragments that you need. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first floor of this dungeon, you will need at least three players to, uh, to beat the first boss. Yeah. So, unfortunately, you cannot solo it, but it is an MMO, so luckily there will be others that will uh, join you. Mm -hmm. No matter how OP you are, there's some things that just do require teamwork. VOE, so Vault of Eternia, Vault of Eternity is one of them, and the Sky Towers, which are really popular. Um, they are, they have a bunch of floors, so we're up to 60 floors now. There are raids that are conducted on different days, and you can get up to a group of 40 people. Uh, so, regular Sky Tower, we go up 25 floors. 
and you just kind of have to do a bunch of different things. There's mechanics, a really fun mechanic, some not so fun. Um, but there's some floors that it doesn't matter how OP you are. If you don't have teamwork, it's, you're not going to go forward. They require teamwork. They require collecting or they require you being at more than one place at the same time. <laughs> so, you know, things like Sky Tower, um, Elite Sky Tower, which is floors 26 to 50, and then Hero Sky Tower, which is floors 51 to 60, you will definitely, definitely, definitely need more than one person. <laughs> but, like, in terms of, like, dungeons from PvE, um, you can, for the most part, like, what we call it, like, be a carry, uh, meaning that you can solo hell and party modes by yourself. It does require quite a bit of knowledge. We talked about the learning curve. It does require a little bit of investment and grinding to make your gear good enough, as you saw in my gear. You know, there's enchantments there. There's 30-plus mm -hmm. gear. So you kind of need to get to that level in order to be able to run those dungeons with the strength of five. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Max body size is five? Yes. For regular dungeons, PV, yes. Okay, nice. Oh. All right, so I guess that gives us our answer. Oh, Scott, do you have anything else? Um, not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> we'll get more in details in a different podcast. <laughs> and yes, Scar can carry you through some dungeons later and show some stuff. <laughs> nice. Um, question number seven. Uh, how would you say, and I guess all of these questions have just been adding up, to this basically but how would you say the end game differs from the early game so in the in, in the early game you're more learning the ropes of the game mm -hmm. um once you pass the um past the, the awakening quest i like to call I like to call it in the in between. You're <laughs> starting to get into the uh, late game features, but you're still learning. Yeah. Um, there you will learn more about uh, pen and uh, some other um, stats that you will need to start working on. And. Uh, then later on in late game um you will focus primarily on uh, on these new stats that uh, before you didn't even know existed stuff like uh like the pen the um detail damage the elemental damage and uh and now recently the armor piercing value okay so all of these mechanics are things that were added over time as the game progressed and was developed i assume that's right um, and like one of the things is that because you you came in so early like so fast through the 90s you didn't have time to learn these things like a player who's been playing since the beginning to learn so mm -hmm. it takes a little bit of time for you to kind of like understand what to do next and where to focus on. In that sense, like I think a lot of players end up a little bit confused. They're like, well, I'm not able to do this anymore that I used to be able to do in these new dungeons. Like, what am I doing wrong? And often the answer to that is like, learn gear better, learn what, you know, things like Eidolon Archive and damage to boss and crit damage and elemental damage and penetration uh, effect of these things are so that you're able to be more efficient when you're running dungeons. I see. What is that dance you're doing? What, Kitsune, what she's doing? No, you. Uh... Me? Oh, I'm doing, doing the Eternia dance. No, wait, the Serena dance. This is Serena dance, and this is the Andorra dance. So this oh. is Andorra. And this is Serena. Oh, are those like extra emojis that you're able to? Purchase? You can farm these dances by doing a special dungeon called Divine Trial, which you will get into 
once you start getting close to uh, your awakening because you will need to do it as well to purchase but with the drops you get you get something uh, called the Holy Spirit and a Holy Spirit can be bought from the auction house sure but actually you can just farm it yourself without having to you know waste gold on it it's a fun little PvP kind of dungeon you can after you get your holy spirit you can build up some more points and get to dance in the shop pvp well okay now i'll save that for for question number nine <laughs> <laughs> all right um so scott uh what is your opinion on how the end game differs from the early game um There's also uh, more of a uh, community or teamwork where the early game you can just play through it solo, mm -hmm. while uh, you can do the late game uh, solo as well. It's usually more fun to do it with uh, someone else. Um, There's also a lot of uh, other things that you will start doing, like what you mentioned before, fishing. Mm -hmm. There's also there's also uh, uh, archaeology or just making a really nice house. Yes, oh, housing. There is housing in this game. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, right. Um, I heard about it, but I haven't seen it yet, so I thought it was a lie. You can come visit my house after this, and you can be amazed by my house because I love my house. Okay, thank you. And I put a lot of time in it. <laughs> but yes, you can definitely come and visit my house and see some of the features. Not much to it. You get some stats from doing all professions, also, which is the reason why people do it. And you can also make a little bit of money with a few of them, like um, alchemy or cooking. Um, because food is something that pretty much every player in endgame will have to use to the dungeons or will want to use. You can do things like move speed food to go faster. You can do things like get more experience from um, your runs food. You can have uh, damage to boss food. You can have triple strike food. All of these foods can play like um, a big um, influence on the type of game that you're playing. People will usually have some sort of food. You'll see them on the little bars, like they have food. Um, the, the gold ones will usually will last you for like six hours, so they're a good deal. But you have to go and grind it. You have to gather the stuff. You have to make the food. Or you can buy it from someone else. That's, you know, a pretty good way for newer players to actually make money is to make food. Nice. So, okay. I will definitely check that out. All right, so thank you for the insight on the early game versus late game. So moving on to number eight. And I know everybody has their own take on this, but I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say. So what are the most unique features that Aura Kingdom has to offer? Mechanics-wise or any anything, actually. What What is the thing that stands out the most? Uh, or some of the things that stand out the most about Aura Kingdom? There, there is a uh, first thing is the costumes. There's so many costumes that you can choose. <laughs> uh, you, I've seen people where they uh, just pick the anime character or just another game character, and they uh, try to mimic their looks, and it came out really well. Mm -hmm. And also the how much you can customize your uh, stats. Um, there's a lot that you can do to be unique, from the envoy path to all the masteries. It, it's a lot to uh, to figure out. Uh, so it's quite nice if you want to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. I'd have to agree. Um, there's always a meta, like I find, in this game. 
that we tend to be like, oh, this is the meta. Oh, this is what everybody's using. But there's a lot to explore in terms of stats and builds and things like that. And you can try different things and see how they work for you. Uh, but definitely the fashion would come first. The sheer amount of things that you can find and you can customize. And you know, there's dice. I think you found the dice as well. Yeah. There's both dice for all the costumes, the orange costumes. And then you also have the romantic dice, which were added a little bit after. Um, and then you can kind of turn things on and off if you want different looks. Um, a lot of people have a lot of fun with the fashion sometimes. If people call it fashion kingdom with the mounts and the weapons and everything. Yeah. You can also it... make some of the actual weapons into costume weapons in the game. I've heard so... about that. I want to explore it a little more. So there's tons that you can do fashion wise that's like so much fun. Um, yeah. The Eidolons, I think, is another feature. Um, I think both for the aesthetics of the Eidolons and, like, you know, a lot of people have their waifus or their, you know, husbands <laughs> that they prefer. Um, so, you know, like, people will kind of, like, pick up a few idol uh, like Eidolons that they really love and kind of stick to them and others. They're always, like, after the next new thing. But they all have unique, one of the things that people don't understand, because in the early game, like, as soon as you summon your idol on a dice in the first boss, and you're like, oh, what's this good for? Actually, no. Like, um, once you kind of learn how to work with your idol ones and you get them, like, strong enough, your idol ones can be a huge asset, because they have special skills that they cast. They can cast on you. It will give you a huge bump in damage or it could give you immunity to certain things um or it could like make the boss not heal or it could stun the boss for like eight seconds or it could do like all kinds of things so when you learn how to work with specific skills of eidolons you'll actually like notice that you can do a lot more you just kind of have to learn how to a, keep them alive, and B, how to cast them properly so that, you know, they're <laughs> casting at the right time. I see, I see. There's also a, uh, I don't know, combo attack, which is like a small cutscene. And uh, they're quite nicely made. And there's a few jokes in, uh, in some of them. <laughs> you can <laughs> yeah. find them. Okay, we'll they are adorable, it. and just actually, just about a month ago, not even that, um, Nidei was one of our senior game sages, and Scar, and um, as they all contributed, I didn't because my FPS sucks, but they all contributed to make it together like a video of all the ultimate skills of all the Eidolons, so you can actually watch it and see how adorable they are, but they're really well made. They can actually save you in combat, too. Which is nice. nice. That is so cool. Yeah, because I did check out some of them earlier. It's like a combo move with your idol on and you, you're flashing all around the screen and doing all these cool things. Yeah. And that's happening in real time. Video. I will I will I will check out that video. I'll probably link it in the description of this uh video as well. Yeah. You can link it and I think it's on our like in our videos, like where we have it on the Discord. Mm hmm you can just take the link from there nice <clears throat> all right so now on to my favorite question because this is what i love to do most in most games and this is actually how i got my name lag all right so a bit of backstory i used to play a game actually uh, another game by aria games called shia right and you know when somebody kills somebody oh, right, right. faction based uh in faction based pvp you'd see that uh player x was killed by player y right so my one of my friends was like so i wonder if somebody was named lag um what would happen like would it say <laughs> would it say killed by lag and i was too good to pass up so at that point i knew that i was going to be my yeah. gamer tag for the rest of my life yeah, <laughs> The lag is coming for us all. Yeah, it actually um, wasn't the lag. I was actually able to get lag with a dash, but you can't use dashes in this game, I think. So. Yeah, so now you're just regular lag, not the lag. Yeah. Uh, Scar, do you PvP? I used to, but it's a lot to keep up. 
Yeah, so how how is so, the PvP in this game? So I don't think PvP is the most developed feature of the game, but it is quite fun. There's quite a few different types of PvP. Uh, do you have a prefer a preference car? I used to like uh, the geared PvP, but I then started focusing more on PvE, so I my gear started to um, be left behind. So <laughs> I would I would either get uh, one shot by someone who went PvP. all in on PvP or uh, or on those few uh, um, rare and uh, lucky encounters. None would be extremely overpowered, so it would have been fun. Um, there's also uh, ungeared PvP, so even if you're just at the level requirement needed to enter, you can just go in and uh, have fun without uh, having to worry to be competitive with oh, okay. everyone else's gear. So, so you get you, your gear doesn't matter in that mode, basically. Yeah. Nice. So um, there's two types. So one is what Scar just said, which is the ungeared, or like everybody's the same. You just gotta use your head, kind of PvP. Out uh, there's the divine trial that we talked about, where you can buy the dances. Mm -hmm. In that PvP, you turn into idol ones actually. So you actually have to go around and find the stones that turn into you into specific Eidolons, and you fight as the Eidolons. So it's kind of like, what's the name of that uh, game that all the kids do? The kids uh, play? Fortnite. Fortnite, yes, it's kind of like Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, Battle Royale mode. Where... And then the other one, I think you may have seen in the World Channel, a few times people just screaming murder you mm -hmm. seen that one yeah so that is holy versus evil and it's another type of ungeared pvp that people go crazy for and it's a lot of fun actually so when you get into it you're into factions it's a faction pvp it's not a free-for-all type of fortnite but it's more like two parties and um you're either going to be a human so you play one of the classes from aura kingdom like a to be like a, a bow or a wizard or a sorcerer or a brawler or if you are very lucky you'll be a duelist um and on the other side you're monsters so you become one of the mobs that you've probably encountered um and you basically fight each other it's fun oh uh, I've seen like <laughs> guild versus guild stuff uh, come across as like guild battle. What is guild battle? Is it like a PvP for guilds or? Um, in that one, um, it's closer to kind of capture the hill, where there are, uh, I believe, five towers, and uh, you need to, as a guild, go and kill one and then defend it from other players while also trying to capture another tower. It's quite fun. I liked it. It's mm. also geared based, so... So if you're unlucky and you are facing off uh, a guild with a lot of strong players, mm -hmm. they can crash you, but uh, with enough uh, teamwork, you can actually beat them back, even if you're under geared. Nice. That is amazing. Uh... And then there's the arena that Scar talked about. It's called Excelsior Arena. And it's a 5-5 type of thing, and it's geared. That one is a lot of fun. You have to, basically, to get points, you don't even have to kill anybody. You just have to capture the tower in the middle. But um, it does get to be, like, you know, if you're not at end game and you're not geared, you might die a lot. So <laughs> some people don't like it. I love it. I play it all the time. I think like two, three times a day. Oh, you see me in the arena. Um, I totally recommend it for like, once you kind of get to end game and you want to do PvP is to start working on your PvP gear. Okay. All right. I am excited for PvP in Aura Kingdom. 
and I know a lot of my friends will be too. So let's. You can let's... also duel each other, by the way. You don't need to be like in an instance. You can just be like you and your buddy, and you're like, hey, you want to fight? And you can. There's an option. And you click on someone's name, duel, and you can just actually start fighting. Let's see. Oh, it says Target is busy right now. I just tried to duel you. <laughs> God, oh, why? Oh, I don't have I don't have PVP gear on here. It's not fair, Scar. Don't hurt me. Uh, who did I pick? Oh, you. Oh, you guys are dueling. I was gonna duel you. Yeah, he's trying to hurt me. He knows I don't have gear. <laughs> oh, don't that. Have gear uh, he killed me. See. HP went Any bye bye. Of dog. <laughs> And then when you kill somebody, you can have like a victory cry. Um, so Scar just defeated me here, and it will show up in general actually if you go on. Yeah, I see uh, it. GS Scar was defeated. GSK. Yeah, he defeated La GS so, Lally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you lost to GS Scar. This is not gonna look very nicely in the arena. I'll find out that I got beaten by Baby Scar. I will, I will see what excels your Scar. I don't have any PvP gear, so you're going. <laughs> I'll see what excels here with my gear. <laughs> uh, nice bit of rivalry going on there. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of fun. Like you can challenge people that are around the same level as you, wearing similar gear, and it's a good way to like learn how to cast skills outside of like dungeons where, you know, like, mm -hmm. have time to try different things. So things like backstrikes and jump casting. What is jump casting? Important. Jump casting is. Like, I don't know if it was meant to be a bug at some point, but it's a feature. When you skill as you are jumping, your skill will basically the the, the like animation of it will be shortened, so you're not having like a long animation. But also, it will let you auto attack right away. Your jump casting. You're just walking around and you're jump casting. It actually allows you to cast faster. Oh. So you see a lot of people when they're in dungeons, they're like jumping all the time, jumping cast, jumping cast. That's why it's because when they're jumping and they're casting mid jump, and they're actually attack. cutting some of that animation to hit faster and auto attack as well. Because you know when you are attacking things that don't die in the first attack. Yes. Um, there's something called an auto attack between cooldowns of skills, right? Yeah. The auto attacks will keep hitting faster when you're jump casting. I am going a to check. A backstrike is something that's also super efficient when you're in a dungeon. You should always try to get behind the boss. That will give you 50% more damage if you can backstrike them. Oh, I, I, I didn't even know that was a thing. I just usually just run up and just try to avoid the red zone. So let's pretend you're the boss. I just come up, smack, 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 run away, smack, 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 run away, and <laughs> I've been doing it all wrong. Instead of doing like a big thing, what you can do, like I, for example, as a wizard, I have a that's a gap closer I don't know I can't remember what class you are or you're whip yes I'm not sure if whip has a, a gap closer but I know shinobi does yeah I'll put you right behind the boss so you can use that skill be right behind the boss and then you can give him your big boom skill just like your killing skill and that will do 50% more damage I use uh, a stun skill to gap close and get right behind the boss or you know you know how they're like in the boss they're always like animating for like four hours before they let you hit them yes you can just literally like do 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 go behind them while they're still talking and then just hit them from behind nice you know if you're having a hard time with the boss run them and backstrike them i need to learn my as, skills better yeah. as you notice it's not gonna work on me i have a pair of eyes on the back of my <laughs> yeah, and backstrike GS car. Now see. you know why he wears the panda behind his back. Yes. Is that a panda? <laughs> I thought that was a corgi. It is a corgi, but let's just say it's a red panda. Yeah. Okay. We pretend it's a red panda. <laughs> Alright, that's fair. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next question. So these are the next few questions are going to be a little more less on content and more on quality of life stuff um like just the player experience the interactions how friendly would you say the staff of this game is or how friendly are the staff oh you just saw scar beat me in the middle of nefaya so 
You could call me. Yeah, <laughs> you bully. I'd, like I'd like to add a little bit of payback. <laughs> Uh, no, I think that, you know, both you have a very friendly, open GS team that's there for you almost like 24 7. Mm -hmm. Whatever you need, you have a question, whether it's, you know, game based, it's about a purchase, or it's about a TOS, it's a doubt you have, it's anything. We're there, we're, we're there like interfacing with you, but you also have a really great community manager. Uh, Lotus is for our game, uh, but we also have community managers for the other servers like Minori. Uh, they're really great. Like, if you can't find a Jess online and you kind of, you know, poke one of them, they'll be completely like, there willing to help you. Um, and then you have the support staff that are the people that you have to write to if there's a bigger issue, like, oh, I want to change my name, or, uh, like, uh, I found, like, I'm having a trouble with something in the game that disappeared, or something crazy like that. You would write what we call a ticket that goes to our support staff. They're really great, too. They usually answer in time. You usually get uh, some sort of reply within, I would say, 24 to, four, to 72 hours max um, oh. on the issue. But usually faster than that. But we say 24 to 72 hours because, you know, sometimes they're busy and they do get, like, more that they have to work. So they could be a little bit slower than usual. But within 72 hours, for sure, you get someone from support staff there's a bigger issue that needs to be dealt with. One oh. working place I want to add. So it's uh, on uh, uh, Saturday or Sunday. It might take a bit longer. Okay. That's fair. Yes. Business days. <laughs> yeah. Business days. Okay. That's cool. Um, other than the game stages and the community managers, do you have any interaction with people like from the dev team or anything like from Gamigo or Aria or? Yes, but I mean, if we usually a lot of the things that we are going to interface are going to be the interface is going to be through the community manager okay. for players, right? like players will pass on feedback or something like that to community managers and community managers will kind of work with, you know, Gamigo and things like that. We do also sometimes get like very fun streams from the Gamigo team that you met that came to see your stream. Yeah. Um, they will come in and do streams for us and they'll kind of interact with the players. They're actually really friendly. They're really nice. They listen. Um, but I would say like for the most part, if there is an issue, best place to start is with your GS team and we'll go from there because a lot of the times like, um, like for example, oh, I mean, that's not true. You could actually, like, if you want something, if you want to get something in a Paragon, you want to see something in the store, in the game, you can actually have the option to just list it in area areas um, in the Discord. And they actually check that channel all the time. Like, let's say, oh, I want this specific weapon. I want to find it. I can't find it in game. You can write it down there. And there will be someone from the marketing department that will go and check and kind of keep a track on that. Oh, nice. Other than that, Usually, we, if there's a, a bigger thing that we need to, like, kind of feedback from the community or anything like that, we just go through the game stage, and then many times we also get the option to kind of do direct feedback, where you send, like, in form of, like, a Google form or something, you send feedback directly to them as well. There's different options, but, like, you won't... You can see, for example, our, um, like... GM, you can see him. He's actually called Scar as well. Um, you can see him in game once in a while, but you likely won't because they kind of keep a low profile. They're not like coming into uh, play that often unless they're incognito. Ah, uh, okay. Because I, I assume they'd be overwhelmed with questions. Can you put this in the game? Can you put that in the game? Stuff like that. Yes. Okay. How difficult would I, I'm not sure if I should ask this on the podcast. How difficult would you think, you know, like, let's assume my channel does well with the Aura Kingdom content and, you know, how feasible do you think it might be to get, like, a community manager or a dev onto one of these podcasts to just talk about the game? Devs might be a little bit difficult because the game is uh, published uh, by Gamago, but it is originally developed by X-Legends. They are a 
group from Taiwan. Oh, okay. I'm not sure how available they would be. You could contact them and be like, hey, I love your game. And I want to talk to you directly. But, you know, it, information might not reflect exactly what's happening in the U.S. server. Oh, I'm so... more concerned with the Taiwan server. Okay, so yeah. if I want to talk to somebody in, like, that, developer yeah. yeah but if you want to talk to someone that has the publishing like that runs the game that we are mm -hmm. playing yeah. right now i think it would be that hard i think it would be more a matter of like being able to find the time for them they are very busy but I you can know imagine. within time maybe perhaps even like in uh, some of the gomigo uh social media people well, we can definitely ask. There's no harm in asking. Yeah. I'm sure that you flattered. Uh, but it's it's about probably finding the time and making sure that. You know, yeah, I've just been going ham with uh, ask, tagging them on Twitter for stuff. I'm surprised they haven't been like, yo, stop <laughs> yet. Oh, well, they like it. <laughs> All publicity is good publicity. <laughs> yeah. Definitely tag uh, away. They'll be fine. But um, as you said, they even came to see your stream. But yeah, like you, definitely something that perhaps can be asked uh, of the community manager to pass on to them and see if there's time and interest and if there's no other conflicts of interest in that mm -hmm. regard, if they'd be willing to participate in something. That's like cool. That. Yeah, because I know I know a lot of uh, corporate stuff go go goes a uh, you know happens in the background that may make mm -hmm. stuff like that not feasible. So, but we'd have to check with them yeah, first. Definitely. Okay. Uh, so I think that answers my question. Number 11, how, how often would you see, uh, this game is updated? We get constant patches. Now we're a little bit delayed for a patch because they are, I think, probably trying to make sure that it's all perfect before they release it. Oh, okay. Um, so we were supposed to have a patch come out a little bit earlier. It got delayed a little bit. But usually the pa it's very much like every month you get a patch. Dang. Um, and since the developers of the original server in Taiwan, X-Legend, are still releasing content, we have, I would say, about a year and a bit of content. We haven't even, like gone through yet to be released then just like today for example they released more content they're very active they're still making content for ak which means that we still have content to release nice that is that is amazing so we I... just recently got this use last level cap s25 yeah yes cap i I believe uh, it's something about uh, two major update, major updates in uh, a year, maybe more, and a few um, smaller ones every uh, month. For, for example, if I remember correctly, um, there was a. Uh, in the past year and a half, we had the um, the cap increase twice, and uh, a new class has been added. So those are quite big updates. And we also had some uh, balancing, um, new uh, new dungeons, new. Um, Tons of new features, like new floors of Vault of Eternity. We had the armor piercing thing. We had the the new level caps. So many new Edelons. Uh, new features within that as well. Like you can upgrade some of your Edelon skills. Uh, it just never ends. But I mean, like, a good way. Because it keeps you, like, always doing something. There is something to kind of go after, even if you've been playing the game for like nine years, you're always like, oh my god, I still haven't done this one thing. So it's it's quite exciting that there's always new content and something around the corner. It's not so overwhelming that it, you can't catch up. Okay. 
Nice. So that's good. I mean, uh, coming into this game means that we have a lot of content to play, and it means that we have a lot of content to look forward to that is coming. So. All right. Uh, that ties directly into number 12. Uh, and I know the whip man, the, the whip master class was the last one that was released. Uh, but how often are new classes released? Would you say? Very often, not like, you know, one every month or anything like that. Before that was the Draco bitch, I want to call it, <laughs> but and the chibi basically. So the, the small one that's Star really color. strong. Yes. The star color is a favorite, I think, of many AK players because it's an extremely versatile class, super strong. It's also a different like gender or like type of style because so now you can dress as a, a boy, a girl, or a chibi, which nice. is kind of fun. So in the future, uh, also be having another class that's similar to the chibi, but it's like the boy kind of <laughs> class. Okay. Which is like the nunchucks or something like that. Okay, okay. That will come out at some point. It's already out in Taiwan, but we don't have it yet. Um, oh. So it, it comes out fairly, it fairly like fast. Yeah, you, you had like the the whip. You had the chibi. For that, you had the um, lancer. I think was it lancer scar. Uh, guitar and oh, the guitar. Lancer. The guitar. You had the lancer. And then they just keep getting released slowly so that you can still kind of, you know, it's not so many that you can't choose which one, but it mm -hmm. adds a new layer of, like, interest for veteran players. Yeah, because, I, I mean, the, the forums and stuff, you haven't, you haven't, I haven't seen much guides and stuff or anything, like, forum-wise for the Whipmaster whip class because it's new. Because I was expecting to jump in and, you know, find lots of YouTube guides on how to do this, how to do that, and... Yeah, but I guess so it's because it was released. We did recently. have it was released really recently, but also we had uh, we have I should say a really wonderful forum, but it's offline right now. Um, I'm not sure the exact nature of why it's offline. But they are revamping it, and hopefully we'll get some of that content back and be on top of that. Nice. In terms of like you know like having manuals and things for the new class. Mm -hmm. But whip, I think um, we haven't seen as many guides as you would have for some like some people went crazy with like the the lancer. There were so many lancer guides or the star color, but then whip they were like, oh, it's a lot of fun. It's really strong, but <laughs> nobody was like dying to write a huge guide. Yeah, it's very squishy though. I've realized because but it does do a lot of life steal type gameplay, like. Die and heal, die and heal, kind of the kind of stuff. But once I could be playing it wrong. Well, once you open your envoy cube, you see that it's not as squishy. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. Your gear might be a little bit of an issue, but also keep in mind that you have non-fortified gear, and we'll talk about that maybe some point in the future. Talk about fortification. Your gear that you're gonna get from the envoy cube. One thing that you could do to instantly just get a little bit stronger is to fortify it to nine. Fortify it to nine, I mean, you know those little weapon scrolls you get from maps? Yeah. Running around killing mobs? Yes. Those are basically free, you just have to grind them out. And you can make your gear, like, have added, hit, like, um, hit points or added mm -hmm. you know, damage or anything like that just by fortifying it. Fortification. Nine is free just by finding those scrolls. Once you get your orange gear from the Envoy Cube, you can start trying to fortify it. And to do that, all you need is fragments, which you get by breaking down the other gear that you're not using. Like the, you know, the blue stuff and the green stuff that you find that you're not using, you can break mm -hmm. that down into fragments and fortify the gear that you have on. You feel okay. way less squishy. Yeah. I've actually been dabbling with the fortification. I, I fortified my weapon um nice. to plus 10 i think very nice yeah or plus 11 yeah. and i'll i think i have some super fortification stuff like the 15th order i'll take it straight to 15 i think you don't want to use you don't want to waste those on lower level gear okay 
you want to so that's one of those things <laughs> that we say like what are some good sage advice to players defense grows and your superiors grows and your orders grows do not use it on early game gear because they can be expensive in game and that gear you probably will be rid of well not permanently but until you create a, uh, an Alex character you probably won't see that gear you'll be done in like two hours and you're like oh okay i'm level 80 now like, <laughs> what are we gonna do so it goes so fast in the early stages that fortifying that gear past nine mm -hmm. is a little bit wasteful you want to be careful in how you allocate your resources in the beginning because oh, okay. there aren't a lot of ways to make money in the beginning Oh, okay. So what we'll do is we'll save... You want to kind of hoard. You want to hoard. You want to hoard until the night. <laughs> yeah. We'll save all of those bits of advice for the last question, which is which deals with advice to new players. So we'll come back to that and save all of the juicy stuff for there. <laughs> um, the next question, I know you answered it during timestamp reasons, but I mean, sorry, I knew you answered it during the podcast already, but for timestamp reasons do i have number 13 do i have to spend money to have fun is the game pay to win um, it it will help you but you don't need to um in our guild we have uh, someone who has only um spent about five uh, US dollars, not because he wanted to, but because we kind of uh, guilted him into doing it. <laughs> and, oh, jeez. And he's way stronger than I am, and I've spent quite a bit. So it's definitely doable, just grinding. Oh, okay. You're going to need to be a bit less wasteful with stuff, as uh, the stuff you're gonna get is more uh, precious since you can't just uh, swipe a credit card at it but it's definitely doable and even if i didn't spend uh, too much money i would still be quite strong okay so it's just about knowing the game the mechanics the kind of gear you want to use and just... it's I think like it's a trifecta that you have to consider right like a lot of people they go oh my gosh this game is pay to win like, what does that mean I don't think it is but I do think that people that do use AP they'll get access to some things earlier mm -hmm. because they'll be like brand new release Eidolon that just came out and it's fresh off the press that is still going to be uh, behind that paywall for maybe like a month before it makes it into a Paragon. So people who are donating to the, um, to the area, uh, area, they will get access to that idol on first. Or, you know, very specific items in game, like the manuals that you've probably seen. Like people talk about the integrated manuals and offering like so much gold so it's because they're not farmable yet again will have eventually like everything they'll become farmable but right now they are kind of behind that ap purchase type of paywall if you mean in the sense that uh, the strongest player ever 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 like but also the the grindiest and he uses ap and he's been there since the beginning like versus someone that just walked in like that person is it's definitely gonna be like have everything and and if you're new you're not gonna be able to get everything that they have overnight but yeah. at, in my guild at least i get a lot of newbies and i get a lot of free to play people um it's just a grind if you want to put your money in real life money in the game to skip some of that grind you can and speed it up you could do things like you get a few Eidolons, you can get some Ruby coins, you roll more Paragons. But can you do all of that free to play just knowing how the mechanics of how the market works, what to grind, what sells well, and like running and making money that way? Yeah, absolutely. But you're either going to put in a lot of time and grind, or you're going to put in a little time and like just do maybe, you know, 
30 minutes a day or something and then swipe your credit card. There what either works, but you will not be able to be like top ranks like you know if you don't put in either one of those things. If you just say I want to be OP and but I don't have time to play the game, I also don't want to spend a penny. How do I get rich overnight without doing anything? <laughs> do you get people that complain like that? Will be like, well, it's not fair because the free to play. You'd be like, well, you guys can do this and you can do that and you can do this. Oh, I don't have that type of time. I'm like, well, <laughs> you either have to put in time or you have to put in money. You cannot not like I, do. I mean, that's a fair trade off. That t I honestly think that's a fair trade off. Like the the loyalty point system in and of itself that you can get the the paid items for free more or less and my guildies have been here for like what a week and they have so many things from a loyalty point shop already and it's not like we know life the game yeah so please don't waste your lp <laughs> with so much fashion early on like have some fun but don't waste all uh -huh. your lp you need it later you <laughs> but no i mean um yes basically like the game will give you almost everything that you need and it's very I think fair in that sense. There is a delay if it's something that's AP only, um, but you can actually get someone else to buy it for you. So you see a lot of people posting like, "We'll pay this much gold to get this AP item," and it's like, okay, well, if someone wants to buy AP and sell it for gold, they can. Like, the game is not stopping you from having those things just because, like, mm -hmm. you can literally get pretty much everything an AP spender gets. They're not stopping you from having those things either. There, there has to be some sort of thing, right, that mm -hmm. you do for it. So a lot of veteran players, they don't really like. They'll usually like get the new idol on, like or something. They'll get something that they think was really important, but for the most part, they just grind it. Um, yeah. And new players, I recommend learn every single way you can grind the things that are grindable. So that you don't waste money getting things that you could have gotten for basically free. That's where it comes into like being able to allocate your resources and your time in a smart way. Like if you're gonna say, "Oh, I'm gonna buy this idol one because I like the look of it, and I'm gonna spend like a hundred dollars," and you're like, "Oh, but you could farm that idol one. Like you could just go to the dungeon and find the idol one and farm it." And you're like, "Oh no, I just want to buy it." Okay, like that's okay, that's fine. That's kind of like you're spending money on something you could have gotten for free. Oh. You know I mean? In that sense, the game gives you a lot for free. The only thing I've spent money on uh, so far, like religiously till I got it, was those boxes that these cat ears came in because they are on uh, they're on voucher points, uh -huh. but they aren't in like any. They're, they're not on the board, and I can't craft them. I can't get them anywhere else. But I needed these cat ears to complete my uh, Here, my okay. OC. So, you equipment. Let me see which cat you. The cat ear headband. Oh okay. my gosh! You literally got a green headband that you spent money on. You look. Oh, yeah, look. this is how you do. Let's hold on. <laughs> this is how you do like a cave. You like something, but it's an old item. You can literally like ask someone to get it for you from the voucher shop, and you just give them gold if they have that your band. Um, Cat. I will. I was looking if uh, I had there's the super band. soft cat ear, and then there's the black cat ear. Which one did you want? The super soft. That's the one you wanted. Yeah, so I I ended up just getting this regular one from 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 the oh bar. Look, I didn't know how to get it, and I no. needed it if I wanted to play. Okay, I I couldn't play an uncatted character. Don't judge me. It just wouldn't work. So this is a, something that you know. Again, for players, you have to know where to find things and how to find things. That it will help you a lot in the long run to save money. You could have saved that gold and actually just gotten it with the ruby coins that you had. You could have easily. So you can go ahead and accept my trade. Oh, my HUD was off. Rip. Yeah, so. 
Here is the super soft. Oh, that's so cool. And now you can actually re-roll it for additional um, like items, and you can also customize it. And later on, you can actually take that and put it in your collection archive because that will also give you some points. What do you mean by re-roll it? Uh, so there's things called costume attribution formulas. Oh, so I can change the heal plus two to something else. Um, yeah, so okay. you could be like damage to boss or blah, blah, blah. I can't remember what goes on the head. Let me see. Yeah, thank you so uh, much. Head damage. is damage against bosses, yeah. I got. I you would roll it for damage against bosses. I think I literally spent about fifteen dollars trying to get this. <laughs> from... yeah. So you could have spent fifteen dollars and gotten them a lot faster. So this is where it comes to being a new player. Is this is a mistake that every new player does, right? They don't yeah. know how to spend the resources they get, whether they're free to play, or they're you know actually purchasing AP. Um. We can guide you on how to best save your money and get the things that you need the fastest, the best way. I impulse spent. I, I like. I know my my friends like. No, you don't need it. You can just grind and you'll get the gold, and then you can just trade somebody for vouchers and get it. And I'm like, uh... which is basically what I did. I just went on the on the on the vouchers and I just used vouchers. Oh. But like with fifteen dollars, you could have bought you could have bought ruby coins. And you could have sold those ruby coins. And Wait, how much did that coin. cost? I need to give you gold for it. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, thank um, you. Car is very rich and he's going to fund me later. Okay. She likes. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of old items are also sometimes given for free. Yeah. So those cat ears, most of the time someone does give them away for free. Dang. I was just it's not, not in it. Spoil his dreams. It's now he not. Knows. It's not very common that you get what you want for free, but yeah. it does happen sometimes. <laughs> we equip um, it right now. One more thing about uh, LP. Mm -hmm. You can you can easily uh, get uh, the uh, weekly 2,000 ruby coins using LP just from doing a few... Um, Goats and uh, VOE, not even daily, just once Week. every once every two days or something like that. And uh, you can get the 2,000 uh, Ruby coins, which will allow you to run through Paragon and get some items that you can hopefully sell for quite a bit of money. Sheesh. <laughs> All right, that's nice. That's good information. All right, do I need... Anything else you want to say on uh, on the issue of spending money or pay to win stuff, uh, Lolly? Um, I think pretty much, you know, if you are going to do it, that's totally fine and it's great because you're supporting the community. But do learn how to spend efficiently so that you won't feel like you're just throwing money away. There, the your old, like your small, you know, contribution to the community can go a really long way in game for you. Mm -hmm. You just have to learn the way. So there's different things that you can keep an eye on. Like if you go in the area uh, website, you see something called a tier spender, right? So um, when you purchase things and you spend the AP that you purchase, you have tiers. And those tiers give you additional bonuses. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can get RC, you can get, you know, certification, you can get specific Eidolons. Yeah. Uh, you can get special outfits if you're a fashion, uh, you know, person. So there's a lot that you can do that, but you can wait until those tiers are really good. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you have two at the same time. Sometimes you have three at the same time. They'll overlap. Sheesh. So you're really redeeming like three tiers at the same time. Sometimes you have special, like really good sales, like the BOGO sale. That yeah you benefited from like yes. that's a sale that will not come all the time but when it comes like you really want to make sure that you know you didn't buy your yeah. regular price when you could have gotten it two for a one so like learning how the these things work will help you save a lot of money but also knowing like where to invest first 
how to invest it wisely. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do get go a little blind for the fashion, which I personally love. But we do have to be careful that you're not putting in fashion above the mechanics of the game and the things that you kind of have to work on in yeah. order to be like you know, strong and then kind of turning around and going, oh, I'm stuck and I don't know, I spend money in this game and I still don't get anything. And it's like, well, you spend money like with things that you could have gotten an easier way or, you know, you didn't really um, kind of spend wisely. So in this case, your guild members, your game stages, your community, mm -hmm. you know, your seniors, your vets, the people that are on Discord, they can really guide you. If you do wish to spend money or if you are grinding and you're on mm -hmm. limited resources as a free to play kind of player, you know, there are things that you can do very efficiently with a minimum amount of time and minimum amount of efforts to get where you want to be. And, you know, my motto is play smart, don't play hard. You can grind, but do it in a smart way. Like, uh... Set goals for yourself and don't get like be all over the place. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, that's some good advice, and that answers the question perfectly. Um, wow. How have we been talking for almost an hour and a half already? Sheesh. Uh, a lot of editing for you. It is a lot of well, not too much editing. <laughs> I don't think we've said anything that I need to edit out per se. Um. So number number fourteen. What do you think the game needs to see an increase in the player base? What can we do as players or can the can the publishers or developers do uh to bring more people to this game? Well, I think that personally um there's a lot that is done already, but it's one of these things where, you know, like this is a nine year old game. So a lot of people that are looking for like mind blowing 4K, super ultra D, like blah, blah, blah features, you're not going to find that in AK. AK is a super cute game. The maps are beautiful. You know, you have so many different features that really make it fun and enjoyable, but it's not going to blow your mind the way that brand new games like are going to blow your mind. It might blow your mind in different ways. Um, and so I think that one of those things is that it doesn't have that like, oh, you know, kind of appeal. But I do think that it's a very thorough game that a lot of people tend to enjoy. Um, the best way to increase the player base is to do what you're doing, is invite your friends. Come tell them to come check it out. Like, you know, people, most people that come in and try it and they get into a, the community, they, you know, kind of meet people in the community, they end up liking it and they end up staying. Um, but it's one of those things that in terms of like sheer kind of like when you have, you know, games that are spending millions of dollars to advertise, you're not going to see mm -hmm. Aura Kingdom be able to compete with that. So there has to be different ways of putting the game out there for the community. Um, and, and that is like through streaming, through like Kind of inviting the friends that you know that enjoy this type of game. It's a very niche game in the sense yeah. it's kind of an anime based type of game. Um, you know, not everybody's gonna enjoy that, but the people that do really enjoy it. Yeah. So I think that they're doing what they're doing. They're putting out content in social media. Um, they do kind of tend to keep the game, you know, there's always something new for the community if you're on the Discord or if you're in the newsletter or anything like that. They're always publishing in the Facebook as well and uh, trying to reach their player base so that, you know, even returning players will come and check it out if they've taken a break. Um, but, you know, it's it's just a matter of, as well, kind of like that word of mouth. Like, oh, I'm playing this really <laughs> fun game. You should come and play it with me. If you are playing by yourself and you don't have a community, it is not as fun. So, like, for you, you're doing the right thing, which is, like, getting your community involved. So you will have fun with your friends regardless, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, a new player that's coming into them, it could be a little bit like, I would say intimidating because you're walking into a community you know not what not of, um, like you don't know anybody and you don't know anything about, and people are afraid of asking questions. We get that all the time. 
Uh, even though we say like, please just hit me up with your questions. No yeah. question is dumb. Like people are like, oh, I'm so, I'm so like, you know, they get so embarrassed to ask questions that are totally normal. Like we've all been there. We've all been like a newbie. We've all had these questions. I, I thought you guys. Yeah. I, thought, yeah, I thought you guys were gonna get upset with me for the amount of questions I was asking the, the day I joined. Because as soon as I, as soon as I joined the Discord, I was like, hmm, I know absolutely nobody here. Let me just start meowing at people in chat. And, <laughs> I start, <laughs> and then I started asking questions. If it works. <laughs> If it works, it works. And if you uh, want to summon Scar, you can just put a red panda in the chat and he'll show up. Or a cute dog, like, video or something. And you see Scar, like, just pop out of nowhere. I will try that. <laughs> so, I think, uh, yeah, I think you guys have a good idea. Um, what I think I might I, I might try to do um, is get some of my other content creator friends to try the game to you know also make content because that is that is a different type of advertising for the game itself you know like if we start doing more youtube content more streams on twitch because i do stream every day on twitch or every other day on twitch um is going to be getting the game out there people are going to see that it has an active community and that we're doing stuff like how i streamed your event today and eventually i'm going to start hosting my own events when i'm when i have enough in-game resources to do so when i max level and I yeah, can afford to absolutely. give away prizes and stuff. So and it starts with your guild. Like a lot of guilds will have those events. Like I do them in my own guild all the time. I know Go, uh, who is another GS that you don't know yet, um, Goddess. She is actually the lead of Transcendent, and she does really cool streams. She's also a content creator. You've probably talked to her. She does streams for her guild, and they do giveaways for the community. But they also do it in guild. We have events like in my guild. I do weekly events. I have fashion shows in my guild. I have like guess the map in my guild. I have hide and seek. So you can actually do that in your own guild with your own limited resources, even pooling resources. If you get your newbies to come in and just kind of get them involved in doing different things outside of just like, oh, let's run a dungeon again. <laughs> um, and, you know, um, it is a lot of fun. Like, I think, like, a lot of players, when we have, you know, things like this, we have, you know, even um, something that, as you grow your guild, you find, which is called a Guild Hall Summon. We get these big Eidolons that we summon in Guild Hall as a team, and we kill them for the yes. fragments. <laughs> so yes. as you grow your guild, you'll be able to do that as you guys get stronger. And it's a big group, so you get a bunch of people to just come in, you know, like, defeat these mm -hmm. Eidolons for a chance to frag. Yeah, because so we're almost do. level four. Um, my guild is almost level four, so we can get a guild hall, I think. Yes! Yay! So as you start to grow, the one thing that I do say is that right now, obviously, you're building your own community, and that's great. Because we can always uh, use new people in the community and new guilds. But do try to make sure that you keep a few vets like close by so that you can ask questions, so that you can get type of like um answers that you need right away of course the gs team is always here as well but you know when it comes to being able to do things efficiently mm -hmm. guilds are important um so if it's anything like getting a guild buff you look at so this is something you want to aim for as a guild lead if you look on my little like um uh if, like see the little buff thing that you have right under my name yeah and under scar's name you see that there's a little blue icon with a little yellow outline a blue icon so, with a yellow icon it looks like a little like I, yeah guild online looks, blessing it level looks two. Like a little bit like south america i don't know why yes so this is for it just looks like south america surrounded by like a yellow outline this is what a guild blessing is when you have more than 10 people online or more than 15 people online or more than 20 people online, you get a different level blessing. So right oh, now in my sheesh. guild, there is 17 people online, I get a level 2 blessing. Okay? If you have 10 people online, you get a level 1 blessing. So Scar right now, Transcendents are taking a nap, getting a level 1 blessing. But these things, when you're running dungeons, they are important. Right? So if you want your player base to 
kind of grow inside your guilt, you need to keep in mind, like, these things in mind for the future, right? Now you're still growing your guilt. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But these things will help you guys a lot grow together as a community. And, you know, making sure that you're doing these things properly in the long term will help you a lot. Mm -hmm. Establish your own guild, your own community. You want to have these. And, you know, it's not that hard to get 10 people online. Even if people are AFK, meaning they're away from their game, they can still kind of do what... What Save Asuna is doing here. here. Yeah. So what Asuna is doing here, she's out somewhere, she's cubing. So she's keeping you guys online. You can do things like that. And that will help you strengthen your guild over time as well. So that's definitely a big like thing okay. um, for you guys as a guild to grow individually as well. It's finding people to properly mentor you on the things to do. The amount of things that you can do in this game, are, it's just so much, <laughs> right? Um, as you can see, we've been talking for an hour and a half, and we basically every other question is like, we're going to go back to that. <laughs> it's because of how much there is in the game to learn and to do and to explore. So, you know, being able to kind of have people to ask those questions off and show you things is important. Yeah. I find that... You need a community in this game just because there's so much to learn. You need kind of like that space to ask those questions. And in case of you guys, because you're growing your own guild, if you don't have that, you should be joining our Discord um, right away so that you can have people to ask. <sighs> that goes... <laughs> I will take that advice. Because God knows I need it. <laughs> So uh, don't be afraid. We have an AK discussions. We have yeah. um, the general. You can ask in general. You have game questions. You have staff support. You have everything in there in the mm -hmm. Discord. I will be more make active. Your yeah. life super easy, um, and bring your friends as well, so they're not afraid to ask those questions. Oh we, yeah. Our community in the Discord is actually really, really nice, and they're really helpful when it comes to asking, to answering these questions. Um, you have a lot of vet players in there, and they will be very patient in asking, in answering those questions. Mm -hmm. Just kind of have to put them out there. But if you don't know, and you don't know what you don't know, uh, and you're not asking anybody, and you just kind of like just you know, trying to figure it out. And like, go, where do we go now? What do we do now? It, it's going to be harder for you. Yeah. So you see that uh, I at, like my guild logo. It still has some pink around it, but that's that's because I didn't do it properly. But I didn't even know how to get it transparent in the first place. It's only because I asked there that I was able to figure out how to get it transparent because it doesn't accept PNGs, and the that's BMP right. doesn't doesn't export transparently. Yeah. <sighs> okay. You work on that, and it's, it will be perfect eventually. <laughs> yeah. Gotta clean it up a little bit. Yeah, there, there are small questions, like things you didn't even know, like, you know, about the Envoy Cube and, you know, how to do a lot of things and professions. You learn as you go, but if you don't have anybody to ask questions when they come up, then it becomes harder for you. Yes. So do encourage your friends to enter the Discord, ask questions. You don't have to just rely on each other as new players uh, for that, because we have a huge community and they're actually really good I at think that, handling questions. I, that answer would fit perfectly for the next question. <laughs> So for timestamp reasons, I'm going to ask it again. <laughs> I hope you don't mind repeating. Um, so number 15, what are your five tips? What are your top five tips for new players to the game? Car, what are your top five? Uh, mainly is to have fun. If you're coming in here to... Um, play the game as if it's your job trying to be the top player, you're going to learn somewhat quickly that uh, it's going to be hard to do it. So unless you're having fun, you're not going to achieve what you want. Um, also about spending, you need to be careful what you what you're spending on. A lot of uh, lot of time. Someone asked me, um, "Hey, I just bought this thing from the uh, um, web mall. Did, was it a mistake?" And it's 
like something I have five of in my inventory that I can just give him for free. Oh, um, another uh, tip that I can give is to find, or in your case, create the community you belong in. Even if uh, you're a solo player, a lot of times the uh, guild buff is worth just being in the guild. Even if you just don't speak, you just have the guild buff. You also help uh, the uh, the guild just by being online. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, it, you're trying to level up your guild. It's not not the uh, it's not easy, but it's not uh, impossible. So even just having uh, someone just running around and every once in a while getting a few experience for the guild, mm -hmm. that would be cool for you, right? Yeah. Um, I think that was five. Yeah. That was close to five. <laughs> the other thing I can suggest is uh, unmute the music and the sound but a lot of players you'll find out that they do have the musical sound turned off what the music and sound the the music is very very immersive and is very nice mm -hmm. i and do yeah. have the music turned off Bruh. Yeah, same. two types of people two types of people, people. <laughs> but see i do it's not that i don't enjoy the music because that most of the time when my game is on i'm actually mm -hmm. also working throughout my day and then i'll afk i'll keep an eye on chat i'll keep an eye on people asking questions but i'm also working throughout the day so i can't have music in the background because <laughs> uh -huh. it would just be like i'm like talking to like you know like a client and then i'll be like doo, 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 doo. you know i get like have it so I would usually have it muted, and once in a while I'll turn it on for fun, but most of the time the, the music, which is beautiful and unique and very, like, very, very nice. I do, like, do unmute it, uh, but most of the time if I'm during the day working, it's on mute. Sheesh. That's fair. Sure. <laughs> right. I think that Scar summarized it pretty, like, well, mm -hmm. you no. Know, it is a game that's been around for a long time so you know you're gonna come in there's gonna be a learning curve in terms of i mean like you can still do a lot of things but you know there is gonna be some things you're gonna have to learn over time do your thing take it one day at a time set your goals have fun you can get to the end game not only pve in terms of leveling but in terms of strength and competitiveness those things are all doable but it's at at your pace at your own time don't get discouraged because you're meeting a vet that's been in the game playing nonstop every day for nine years. And you're like, I'll never be like that. It's like, <laughs> I'm not going to be like that overnight. But you can get there. Just, you know, at a uh -huh. time. It's, you know, it's an MMO. It's not a, a, a it's not a, like, a, a phone game. It's, it's, a, it's an MMO. It takes time. It's grindy. Um, but, you know, community is important. So, you try to kind of keep to a community where you belong and, you know, get to know people and learn and don't be afraid to ask questions. Questions are always welcome. And um, that's it. Like sometimes take a break from leveling and go check out so much that the game has to offer and not just like in professions and stuff like that. But overall, the maps are gorgeous and there's so much fun to just kind of like walk around and find hidden places in the map. And there are hidden quests. Yes, as well as hidden quests and lots of eavesdropping, as you've learned. Mm -hmm. um, there's tons of things to do in maps. And, tons uh, of achievements to get. But, you know, despite, like, even though they can give you points and stats and stuff like that, it's just the sheer, like, how beautiful it is. There's so much content to explore. So many maps to open. And each map has been designed in such a beautiful, like, unique way. Sometimes if you're just, like, running around and, like, checking out the sky lines and, like, you know, everything that's been created, you can, like, lose quite a bit of time just kind of enjoying how well made the, the map is. Yeah. So, 
try to find something that you really like about the game instead of just kind of like focusing on being the best or something like that. There's also uh, some Easter eggs with the hidden quests. I won't spoil any, but there were quite a few where you say, oh, I recognize this. <laughs> like the name of an item or the names of the characters. <laughs> it's quite fun to see them. Yes, you will enjoy it. There's tons and tons to explore. I hope that, you know, you and your friends can come and new people will come and, you know, we are always there as the GS team. Do not be afraid to drop us a line if you have a question or you can just drop it on the Discord um, and someone, if we are not online, will answer it for you guys. I think in terms of community, in other communities that I've been to, I think AK community is really friendly. So, you know, new people get really well received whenever they come in as long as you're nice and then they're not being obnoxious obviously <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair point all right so do i think that concludes this round of questions uh do either of you have any closing words uh, i would thank... love to thank you no i would like to thank you guys for being here <laughs> You guys took two hours out of your time to come and sit here and chat with me and, you know, record things. So, and give your gift of knowledge to the world. <laughs> Thank you for having us. I hope you can kind of share some of the stuff and condense it probably for your <laughs> for player base. It's very long. That No, that's okay. But, uh, My community is accustomed to long, long podcasts. <laughs> This is short. We've done like three hour long podcasts already. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, time permitting, totally fine to do some of these Q and A's because I do think that one of the main issues with our community is that there's so much to learn that people can get a yeah. little lost in what to do first and what to focus on. So um, if you can think up of some other types of podcasts, I'm totally fine. Just let me know. <laughs> let us know. Car is there too. I'm Don't let him sure. bully you on PvP. <laughs> yes, please. If, yes. Eventually, I'm sure we'll get to three or four hours podcasts in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I will be happy but to host. For now, uh, thank you for having us on. All right, you want to turn thank around you. now, Lisa, uh, yeah, and give a wave so we can all wave. Oh, yeah. yes. and yeah. thank you for editing out some of my weird moments <laughs> oh you think I'm going to edit that out no. you just like make them longer yeah <laughs> where's my wave yeah the, the five seconds where I was thinking just make them like 30 seconds there yeah <laughs> okay, good right. thing is learning how to use as well your hotkeys to mm -hmm. put your emoticons in there so you can spam them at people yeah definitely there you go.